Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Courtney Poole on the issues of sexual projection, addictions and fears. This session was recorded on the 15th of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part two. I've been feeling about it lately. There is a tendency in many women to manipulate by giving sexual energy. Mm -hmm. There is a tendency though of many, many men to manipulate by taking sexual energy. And, and um, sometimes quite in a, quite a forceful uh, uh, way, uh, both the men and the and women And a lot of men exchange. have learned that if they can please the women in other areas, they'll get a sexual response. Yeah. And this is what makes them feel good about themselves. So you end up with a lot of men who pander towards women so they can get a sexual response. And then there's also sexual violence that occurs, which is all about abusive superiority feelings and power-based feelings over the opposite gender, generally, mm -hmm. um, or even the same gender, depending on who you're carrying out the violence towards, yeah. the sexual violence towards I'm talking about yeah. now. Yeah. So, for example, a male priest who's taking out his sexual uh, feelings towards young boys obviously is, is sexually violent towards young boys and therefore has major issues sexually with their own parent, their own father in particular, mm -hmm. um, and, and also major issues with women and, mm -hmm. and their own mother. And, I'm, and I probably shouldn't have said in particular, both, both genders. Yes. And in fact, one of the main reasons why they're choosing young boys is because they're afraid and frightened of girls. And adult women. And especially. adult women in particular. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the religious thing about of a priest needing to be celibate and so forth, yeah. which makes it even more difficult, yeah. and uh, which is obviously completely against what, how God created us to be. Yeah. And so, you know, there's all sorts of other issues that arise there. Yeah. And so you can see that, um, and, and then if maybe if I use another example, if a man is taking out his sexual frustration on young girls, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, he's, and he's abusing and a, a pedophile with young girls, mm -hmm. then it indicates that he has some very, very deep issues with older women as well, like women his own age. Sort of rage-based feelings, would you Both say? Both rage-based feelings, yeah. but also fear-based feelings yeah. Uh, yeah. associated with feeling like a... W w uh, and often grief-based feelings, mm. feeling like uh, an old, an older woman, a mm. woman his own age, won't give he, her heart to him, but he, but he can take it from a young girl, yeah. for example. So very, very damaging emotions, all of these emotions, and, mm. and it's a very, very important to address them. And, and we have the ability to address them, but unfortunately, even discussing them has so much negative associations and yeah. so much shame, guilt and, and, and um, rejection associated yeah. with judgment in particular is probably the biggest thing. Yeah. And we don't address them. Yeah. And, and therefore we live in them. And, yeah. and this is why the world is so damaged when it comes to sexual expression. Yeah. For an adult to... Uh, admit that they have uh, uh, pedophilic, is that a word, feelings, sexual feelings for children, even that alone usually causes such an extreme and violent Reduction, because yeah. so many of us have the experience of abuse in our childhood that's unhealed. Someone speaking, saying, oh, look, I have that desire. But also many people, the, many people who are enraged often have that desire themselves. Ah, of course. Yes. That's why they have so much judgment towards yes. that desire. Similar to homophobia. Correct. Like similar that. to yeah. homophobia. Yeah. It's a similar underlying emotional reason why we project it is because we have a lot of judgment associated with it, whether that judgment came from our environment or from our own feelings. Mm. Um, a judgment can be projected towards the other and that's what causes a lot of that. So, yeah, it's a very, it can be a very complicated thing. It's very important to work through these issues because without it, you can't heal yourself sexually. If you don't heal yourself sexually, you will not be able to recognize your soulmate ever, mm. ever, mm. generally. And this is why most people never recognize their soulmate until the fifth sphere of the spirit world. Yeah. Because that's the time when they start truly addressing some of these intergender emotional injuries. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Back to Courtney. Sure. <laughs> um, in my awake state, I don't struggle with cheating and my dreams feel far more sexually charged than any interactions when I'm awake. Mm. I just wanted to address something in that mm -hmm. statement. Courtney has a partner, but she's feeling more sexual 
emotion in her sleep state than in her awake state, Mm -hmm. that would tend to indicate that she's kind of globally suppressing a lot of sexual emotion in her awake state, wouldn't it? Correct. Yeah. 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 And and you can understand why she she's a female gay soul. Yeah. Yeah. With the additional issue of huge amounts of religious projection. Yeah. With the additional issue that her own mother and father don't really approve of her, mm-hmm. her they I call the it sense. her choice, <laughs> yeah. I'd call it yeah. her nature. Yes. And then on top of that, the society in which she lives has many confusing yeah. associations. So the American society has yeah. very many confusing associations with gay and lesbian people. Yeah. So you've got a huge amount yeah. of projection going at her which is the reason why she shut herself down so much sexually in her awake state. So naturally, in her sleep state, there are going to be more sexual, there's going to be more sexual charge Mm -hmm. because she's not fulfilling herself sexually in her awake state. Yeah. So of course, it's going to be an issue where she feels more connected in the sleep state than her awake state. Yeah. Great. Okay, she says, however, I can look back and see that there has been sexual projection in my awake state my whole life. Yes. And have clear memories as young as four or five years of age of doing it towards more than one person and towards men and women alike. Yes, now if we can point out, the re- she, so we've pointed out, firstly, she's suppressing herself sexually in her awake state. Yeah. That's number one. The second thing that's happening here is that she's learnt sexual manipulation through the way in which her parents modelled sexual manipulation. Yeah. And so this is the reason why she learnt as a, as a young child to sexually project at men and women under certain circumstances. Mm-hmm. And, and those particular circumstances she needs to become sensitive to. Like why, why do I project at some women and not others? Mm-hmm. And why do I project at some women who are pretty yeah. And other women who are pretty, I don't project to. Yeah. And why do I project at some women who I don't find physically attractive and yet, I, you know... And then I project and, at them. Yeah. And I project at them. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. And, and in the answer to those questions, she'll discover yeah. what she's afraid of, most probably, in yeah. her case in particular. Yes, in her case. In her case yeah. in particular, it's a lot about fear. Yes. She'll discover what she's ashamed of and and what she is using the sexual feelings as a bartering tool to avoid. And that's the key, isn't it? Yes. And even if she thinks back to even these very clear early memories that she has, what was the situation I was in? Who was the person I was engaged with? What, what feeling, feeling did they give me? Did they give me or what, what did I feel generally in that situation? Yeah. Um, and that will give her so many clues as to understanding okay, I'm using sex as a bartering tool, this sexual emotion. What, what is it I'm trying to barter? Yes. And as you said, it's a lot about fear and approval for Courtney, isn't it? Yes, and I think I need to point out at this point that people who are sexual, sexual predators and particularly pedophiles have some major uh, problems with the way in which they reason. And one of the ways they reason is that, that children want sexual... Um, Interaction. interaction and so as an adult they engage it mm-hmm. now children do want sexual interaction and the reason why they do is because they've already injured through their society based injuries and parental based injuries mm-hmm. as an adult it is a requirement of adult to exercise more responsibility yeah. and not further harm the child in that particular sexual injury yeah and I see a lot of people who, and particularly historically, you know, back in our mm-hmm. first century life, mm-hmm. it was a common thing for a man to sleep with a lot of his daughters, for example. And, and you know, these particular injuries are huge injuries in, the ma- in, in this case that I'm exa- using the men mm-hmm. who are pedophiles. Of course, there are women who are also pedophiles. Yeah. And the same applies to them. Yeah. My, my, my feeling is that we need to make sure that we understand that yes children do have sexual confusion sexually confusing emotions yeah. but those sexually confusing emotions are primarily the result of the injuries coming from their parents and society and religion and politics and yeah. all other forms of society <laughs> the barrage uh, that, hits. that yeah. entered them from the time of um uh, conception. conception to you know usually before they're three or four years of age yeah. And as a result of that, any child who's three or four years of age projecting sexually mm. is actually demonstrating 
that there is a damage from their family-based environment or yeah. their environment that they've grown up in already that's occurred that's severe enough for them to understand how to use sexual emotion mm -hmm. as a way of manipulating circumstances and events. Yeah, and there's those very sad statistics about children who are sexually abused, physically sexually abused um, in their childhood, that very often it happens then more than once in their childhood and then they go on to be raped as adults or most adolescents. Most spirits and who are involved in this process with people on earth and most pedophiles are very sensitive to the fact that somebody has already been sexually harmed and therefore opened it to their harm. Yes, they're yeah. opened up already. They've been given a very injured understanding of sexuality yes. that will mean they're more receptive than, say, another child or another yes. adolescent. And also less uh, willing to be open and truthful about it. Yeah, more shamed. And more shamed. And the higher the likelihood of the shame, the higher the likelihood is, is that the family, if they were ever told of the event, would be angry with the child rather than the perpetrators. Yeah. So that, that adds to the burden of the child. Mm. So there is a lot of complicated issues we need to discuss with regard to predators and sexual predators and the, the most sexual predators. And I feel everybody to a degree uh, by sexually projecting is, is becoming a sexual predator. Yeah. They, they are using manipulative techniques in order to gain some kind of response from the other person. Mm -hmm. But when you do this with children, yeah. it is particularly a serious problem. Yeah. And, uh, and requires that you need to address some issues as soon as you possibly can because it, it, you are in danger of severely harming children if you engage the, you know, if you actually take action upon your feelings with regard to your sexual attraction to children. Yeah. As we've discussed, though, in other public seminars, there is the issue of emotional incest, isn't there, where... Uh, one parent or sometimes both parents are project, uh, transmitting sexual emotions towards well, their children. This is the reason why there is so much abuse of children that occurs on the planet is because generally the parents have set up some kind of emotionally incestuous relationship already with that child yeah. and that's caused a lot of these particular problems to occur. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very serious problem and, and, and it, because of the humankind's uh, unwillingness to generally address issues regarding sexuality from an emotional perspective, mm -hmm. most people never resolve these issues their entire life. Yeah, and it's a terrible burden, isn't it, to yeah. carry through life and mm. a terrible part of ourselves that's all locked away and shut down with shame and yeah. and really prevents a lot of potential happiness. Yeah, and yeah. we can resolve it. Yeah. That's the sad thing. You yeah. can resolve it and in a relatively short time. Yeah. But, but it requires a number of things and perhaps that's what we need to talk about. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, there's a little bit more from Courtney. Do you yep, want so me to... Yep, so let's answer her so last and then we'll talk about how to resolve sexual projection issues. <laughs> Good. <laughs> From a practical because perspective. Because we've talked a lot generally and we talked a lot about predators, mm -hmm. but really Courtney's saying, look, I was a little girl and I was projecting at both genders. What's up with that? Yeah, no, and you know, she was taught to do so. So Yep, yep. And she says, now I'm able to choose. She puts that in inverted commas because she knows it's not... She's, yep. She's, if it's in her soul, it's there. But um, I'm now I'm able to choose not to sexually project the energy outwards. But it, still I'm aware I have an attraction. And of course, there's the dreams. Mm. I feel a lot of shame about this, but I'm asking because I feel like there must be big denial evidenced in that this isn't changing. Mm. So, well, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Now, let me point out that often the person has answered their own question when they ask us yes. a question. And, and what it is here is that firstly, Courtney needs to allow herself to feel some shame because yeah. that's what's causing her judgment. And remember we said that the first way we need to go, we, what we need to do if we're ever going to resolve sexual issues like projection issues is we need to address why we judge them so much. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty obvious to me why Courtney judges them so much, given her, the environment she lives, how she was brought up, the religious connotations of her fam her, the religious uh, condition of her family and so forth. Yes. You can see exactly why she needs to address these issues. So she needs to connect emotionally to the feelings of shame that she has towards herself, even about her own sexual identity. Firstly, towards herself about her own sexual identity. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this has affected her self self worth with both men and women. Yeah. Because there's a general feeling in most gay uh, souls that religion, mm -hmm. in particular, um, um, rejects, it, yeah, well, not only rejects it, it actively um, uh, condemns you. Condemns them. Yes. So, yeah. so it's not only just a rejection; it's a, mm -hmm. it's a condemnation. Yeah. And so, usually, most people who have grown up in an environment as a religious family have have already received huge amounts of internal condemnation, soul to soul. Mm -hmm. So, if the soul of dad or mum believes there to be no such thing as gay people, mm -hmm. believes that being gay is wrong, and then of course they will attract a little gay soul generally <laughs> often yeah often times and now that little gay soul is there to trigger mum and dad and work, help them work through some love issues which yeah. often they don't do yeah and, and as a result the mum and dad project uh, are projecting constantly at the child mm -hmm. that it is unsatisfactory it is it is condemned mm -hmm. from god's perspective yes and so the little child grows up in an environment believing itself to be condemned. And we should point out that, one, even before Courtney was personally aware of her sexual, like the orientation, the orientation of her soul. Her soul would she, still know it. Her soul knows it and is absorbing that. Correct. And two, even if her parents have changed since, since it's still that early childhood experience of, that has impacted so much on her sexual identity. Yes, and a lot of parents change, but they don't, haven't changed their and underlying their soul. soul condition. Yes, yes. So they still they have a sneaking fairly. suspicion that it's wrong to be gay. Yes, exactly. Uh, that, that comes from their soul feeling that yeah. it is wrong to be gay. Yeah. And as a result of that, that is projected at the child. Yeah. Ironically, causing the child even more problems yeah. from a sexual perspective. Yeah. Um, and often the child is confused sexually because of the sexual projections of the parent. <laughs> if it wasn't the sexual yeah. projections of the parent weren't projected from mum or, to, or from dad to the yeah. child, then the child would grow up in an environment where it's secure with its own sexuality mm -hmm. and wouldn't understand who, who it is from a much younger age. Yeah. And by the time it was seven years of age, it would have a very clear understanding that it's either gay or heterosexual. Mm -hmm. It would know. Um, because there would be no surrounding events that would cause it to understand differently. Yeah. So it would know. It yeah. would know that it, that now that it has beginnings of sexual development mm -hmm. that continue now through its teenage years, it would have. It would know before it becomes a teenager generally under those circumstances that you know it, I'm gay or not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Quite clearly. Yeah. Quite yeah. clearly. Um, unfortunately, because of the most of the projections that come from the emotional. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the best way to call it, it is it is emotional, emotionally incestuous. Yeah. Um, so it's emotional incestuous behaviour of the parents mm -hmm. that cause the child even to have any confusion in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So that's sad. So you're saying Courtney um, needs to feel some shame that she has directed. Well, no, number one is she needs to work through her judgment. Right. That the, the judgment causes her shame. Mm. The shame is the resulting emotion of the judgment. And we, we need to work through the judgment first. So the yeah. judgment is about, it, it, judgment always comes from either your exterior environment mm -hmm. or an internal feeling that you're out of harmony with something, one of the two. Now, mostly it's from our external environment because it, if, because it's highly unlikely that a child of three or four years of age would have start projecting sexually if it wasn't already receiving some kind of judgments and some okay. kind of bartering system approval for yes. sexual projection. For sexual projection. Yeah, at four or five, it's it's got to have been happening in your day-to-day -day environment Correct. for you to take it on as a, as a as manipulation tool. As a manipulation tool, tool to yeah. get to protect yourself, to make yourself feel safe and secure, or even to make yourself feel like you're approved, approved of. of. Yeah. In, in Courtney's case, she was not approved of by her yeah. mother and father. Yeah. So obviously this is a big going to be the big, a big issue for her. The fact that she would have started projecting sexually at a young age is a lot to do with the fact that she wasn't sexually approved of by yeah. her mother and father. Yeah, yeah. And so she's judging really at a deep level. There's a judgment she's taken on towards herself from her environment, from her environment about her sexual orientation yes and there's additional or there's judgment. only one other exception okay and yep. the other exception is if she knows herself that she she knows herself to be not gay and she's engaging in gay behavior yes very important isn't it yep. so that that that's also an exception 
Yes, so she could actually be feeling quite ashamed and judgmental of herself when her soul knowledge is actually I'm heterosexual soul. But but I'm just engaging in this behaviour because of the deep emotional injuries caused by, you know, sexual addictions that I have based on my deep emotional injuries in my childhood. Yes. Either way, she's not to blame for the underlying emotion. No. So this is where we've got to stop the judgment. Yeah. We've got to stop saying to ourselves that we're to blame for the underlying emotion that's present. We need to just feel the emotion without judgment. Yeah, yeah. Because in either case, the it's... It's a condition that's come from external to her. Yes. If she has deep injuries with women that are causing her to feel that she's gay when she's not, uh, that's come towards her at a very young age to have affected her so yes. deeply. Or, on the other hand, she has felt rejected and judged from mm. a very young age by her environment and so she's deeply judging her sexuality. Yes. Yeah. But shame is not an emotion to feel. Good. <laughs> the emotion that we need to feel is what's underneath the actual shame. Yeah. Right. Shame is the effect of judgment of the emotion that's underneath, mm-hmm. the condition that's underneath, mm-hmm. the feeling that's underneath. Yeah. That's why we feel ashamed, because we have a layer of judgment on top. Mm. So we need to feel through the judgments. Yes. And look at all the judgments we have. So when we're feeling through them, we're becoming emotionally aware, emotionally aware of, of how all of our judgment, we're judging ourselves, of our sexuality, or what we engage with sexually. Yeah. And once we've worked through our judgments, right, we will find that the shame should automatically have dissipated. Yeah, sometimes I think about my shame as it's almost an emotion I'm exerting against myself to prevent the deeper emotions. It is. Mm. Shame, the reason why we were shamed Mm -hmm. is so that we didn't have to feel the deep, we shouldn't feel the deeper emotions. To shut us down from feeling. It's purposefully shut us down. Yes. Shame is a tool that's either used by ourselves or others Mm -hmm. to shut down the real emotion. Yeah. So important. So this is why it's very important to understand that shame itself, Mm -hmm. and I I hear a lot of people talk about feeling the emotion of shame, when the reality is the emotion of shame only exists Mm -hmm. as a tool to shut down a deeper emotion that you don't want to experience for whatever reason. And that deeper emotion is usually a sadness or it could be an anger related to some causal emotion. Mm. Or even fear. I feel that I have quite a lot of sexual Yes, but shame fear. itself is fear. It is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it is. It's a fear that you So you you're need bad. to be willing yeah. to feel shame. Yes. <laughs> because it's a fear. Yes. But it is not the underlying reason why you feel ashamed. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. I, I feel that's where most people get caught up, caught out when it comes to dealing with shame. They feel the shame is real, yes, rather than a false emotion appearing real, yes, yes. Right? and it's not causal in any way. It's not going to be felt enough that you'll release it. It's something you work through. No, you need to allow it to it's feeling. You need yes. to allow the feeling of shame, just like you need to allow the feeling of fear. Yeah. The key question is, what am I afraid of when you're feeling fear? Yes. And the key question with shame is, what am I ashamed of? Yes. That's causing my shame. Because as soon as you, as soon as you establish that and begin to feel that, then the the fear or the shame diminishes, doesn't it? Of course That's it will. That's what it feels like, yes. You need to still allow yourself to feel the emotion of yep. fear and shame. Allowing it. Without acting it. upon it. Yes. And without telling yourself it's the truth. And without telling yourself it's the truth. Yeah. Because it's not. Yeah. Right? Yep. No, in the end, once you're at one with God, you will not have any fear and you will also not have any shame. <laughs> <laughs> so both emotions are not true. They're not the truth. They are what you've been told as true that you now and and are being used by you now yeah. to suppress a deeper feeling. Yeah. So the key question with fear is what am I afraid of? And the key question, key question with any fear-based emotion, including shame, yeah. is what am I afraid of? Yeah. And in the case of shame, you are afraid of something. What yeah. am I? So you could ask, re-ask the question as what am I ashamed of? Yes. You know, what do I feel guilty about? Yes. Guilt itself, not 
a real emotion unless we've done something that's truly out of harmony with God's love and then yeah. we'll feel the conscience guilt. Yeah. But aside from that... But, but we never get to repentance feeling through guilt because we have to establish just what you said. Well, you never what get, do I feel guilty never, about? You never get to repentance feeling, feeling guilt itself mm -hmm. and feeling guilty all the time. But if... You will get, you will get to repentance by allowing the guilty yes. feeling to be yeah. present and examine why you yes. feel or what you feel guilty about. about. And as soon as you connect with that, <laughs> That's right. you're through the guilt and you're starting a process now that can lead you into repentance. Yes, and you'll still have feelings of guilt until the process of repentance or forgiveness that's underlying will yeah, need to sure. be engaged in order to feel through everything. But there's something that you feel guilty about. There's something you feel ashamed of. You know, what is it? It could be past behaviour. It could be, you know, it could be other people's treatment of you. It could yeah. be that you were shamed by another person and then you have to feel about that event yeah. where mum or dad, you know, you were playing with yourself sexually or something and mum and dad attacked you. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why you feel so much shame yeah. because of their attack. It's the fear of their attack that's causing yes. your feeling. Yes, or you'd it's need the to feel that. fear, the feeling that they projected is you're completely rejected now. Yeah, so you're unlovable. So if you feel that, yes. now you have got some hope to work through the issue. Yeah. Right. yeah. I can feel the keyboards out there tapping away again. <laughs> FAQs, so, FAQs. Yeah, but, but it's, it's very yeah. important. And we've talked about this a bit in the emotions FAQ yeah, about have. shame and yeah. how shame is not really a causal emotion. It is a fear-based emotion. Yeah. Uh, and we're ashamed of something yeah. and we've got to allow ourselves to see what we're ashamed of. It's same with guilt. Guilt mm -hmm. is not a cause of emotion. It's a motion that we're guilty of something. What yeah. is it that we're guilty of? Yeah. And, and the same with fear. Fear is an emotion that we need to allow ourselves to feel all these feelings we need to let ourselves have. Yes. They need to be present. And in fact, they'll need to be present in order to find out what we're afraid of. If we, exactly. If we, so, for example, if I suppress fear about something, I'll never know what it's about. Yeah. If I suppress shame about something, I'll never know what shame is about. Mm -hmm. If I suppress guilt about something, I'll never know what I feel guilty about. Yeah. If I allow these feelings of shame, guilt and, and fear to be mm -hmm. felt, then ask the question, this is a feeling. What am I feeling guilty about? Yeah. Now I have some, way, some method of getting deeper into the emotion and finding out what the real cause is. Yeah, and my experience is that um, if I really have surrendered to the feeling, say, of guilt or shame, then what it's about becomes apparent very quickly. Almost, if you're asking God, even, it will be instant. Yes. Because if, if, as soon as you have a willingness to know the truth about what it is that you're afraid of or ashamed of or guilty about, yeah. God will supply you with that truth. It will yeah. be pretty close to instant and if you're pretty open. And it's almost inherent in the emotion f for me. I don't know. Of course if, it will be. But, but then there's this other way that I see. I've done it a lot and I see other people trying to feel guilt, shame or fear, but they're, they're really... They've not surrendered to that emotion, and so they never get deeper. They just end up in a self-punishing cycle. But self-punishment again is another addiction. Is another addiction to avoid the underlying emotion. Exactly. So it's yes. the same as shame, or the same as fear, or the same as any of these emotions. They're all emotions that that are capping emotions. We use them to avoid the deeper the emotions. Deeper emotions. And the addictions, of course, are even above that. There's yes. another layer above that. So we've got all these capping emotions that we use to avoid the real stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the addictions that are pretty layer on the top <laughs> that help it, and the facade layer. on the top yeah. that helps us avoid the fact that we're even afraid or that we are even yeah. feel ashamed or even feel guilty. Holy. And in the addiction, we can do all sorts of things. So this is where in the addiction, this is where men can go around and have sex with 20 500 different women and not feel ashamed about it. Yeah. Because the reality is they are two layers removed from even feeling anything yes. to do with sexual emotion. Yeah. And, and the same applies with women who are willing to give up the, themselves sexually to men. And be very promiscuous. And There's be a lot promiscuous of women who are, and yeah. feel quite happy about it. Yeah. They're in that top layer yeah. of, you know, not a, they're in the addiction of it, try, yeah. completely avoiding the fear based mm -hmm. layer, which mm -hmm. is the shame, the guilt, the fear the based fear. layer. And underneath that layer is the real reasons why they do these things. Yeah. Right. They're the real, heal the real injuries to be healed. Yeah. And once they're gone, then that layer that seems so pretty, the facade and the addictions will feel, you, you feel completely different about yes. those things.
Judgment is an addiction. Yeah, very so Judgment's an addiction. Self-punishment is an addiction. Yeah. It helps you avoid fear and other deeper emotions. It's like all this will exerted, isn't it, against the causal injury. There's these the fear, guilt, shame. It's like, no, oh, I yeah. want to stay down. And then we pile judgment, self-punishment on top. And that's usually we start that. That's the addiction, isn't it? Well, that's, when, part of, that's one half of the addiction. That's and, what I'd classify as the negative part of our addiction. Yes. And then there's, if you could call it positive, I don't see anything as positive. <laughs> we but feel the, more positive. The nice things <laughs> yeah. that happen in our addiction, they are all the po- what we'd classify as the positive things about yeah, our addiction. Yeah. So yeah. when the positive things don't work yes. and often they're not strong enough to work yeah we revert to the negatives because they usually have a much higher ability to work to push everything to down. push everything down it's a terrible thing so so yeah. when you know when our addiction for sex coffee you know tv uh, and porn whatever else is not working from a sexual perspective yeah, yeah. then we revert to self-punishment so you know yeah. so uh, um, self judgment judgment yeah and all of those things are still addictions. Yeah. And we're still avoiding the underlying emotion. Way, way away from way, it. Way, way. Two layers. Two from layers. It. Two right. layers because we're still in the addiction. Yeah. We need to get out of those spaces, places. So this is what I'm saying. You need to feel about the judgments because they are, that is an addiction in itself. Mm-hmm. The judgment is an addiction. Judgments were usually addictions set up by our environment mm. that we then engaged because they worked. Yes. for our environment and therefore we believe they should work for us so for example if my parent feels it's very very wrong to be a gay child mm-hmm. uh, to to have any gay tendencies at all and that it's all something to do with the lack of self-control and other emotions then of course that parent will project that at the child and and the child will have just the same level of judgment, judgment. as the parent had mm-hmm towards that particular thing unless the child works through the truth about that judgment yeah so uh, there's a high tendency of the child to accept the addiction of judgment and then to perpetrate it upon itself towards itself towards itself to internalize external judgments towards it it knows that that's the way it gets the approval of the parent Mm -hmm. so there is a reward with Mm -hmm. every addiction there is a seeming reward Mm -hmm. the reward is I agree with mummy and daddy on this particular issue that I should judge my sexuality Mm -hmm. and then I'll get my approval from mummy and daddy that I'm a good girl which I desperately need yeah so so the reward is the approval that Mm -hmm. I'm a good girl Mm -hmm. and the the addiction is I've got to be just as judgmental towards homosexual people as mummy and daddy are yeah yeah right or just as judgmental towards a homosexual sexuality my, yes. If it's my own sexuality and I'm a homosexual, just as judgmental towards that as my mummy and daddy are. Mm. So it's very, very sad. It's a big issue for um, gay people, isn't it? And I can't really think of any gay person I've met on earth who has actually fully resolved that issue. Because Not at all, no. It's such an environment that is saturated with judgment, really. Yes. I, in fact, world. I meet many lesbians who project terribly at men. <laughs> like, honestly, <laughs> that oftentimes yeah. they're sexually projecting at men more yeah. than they're yeah. <laughs> sexually projecting at, at the same uh, gender that they yeah. say they are attracted to. Yeah. Um, and and uh, homosexual men are often, often the same, exactly projecting the same, huge amounts yeah. of sexual energy at women. Yes. And even women the, love even, it. <laughs> yeah, and women often love it. Yeah. And this is because of the underlying emotional injuries. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So And you can't say as a gay person that you have healed your sexuality and you've come to terms with your sexuality if you are still sexually projecting at the at opposite gender. The opposite gender. Mm. Um you just can't. It's not true. And even if you're sexually projecting at the same gender, you uh, still haven't resolved it. As I've said from exactly. God's perspective, the only person in the end you'll sexually project at is your soulmate, your other half. So <laughs> when you get to that point, you can say, I've healed I've my healed sexuality. <laughs> I'm, I'm fully... And that applies whether I'm heterosexual or homosexual. Yeah. I've healed yeah. it once I am no longer sexually projecting at any other person other than my soulmate. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so, so I feel that's given uh, Courtney. a bit of Co- yeah. Courtney a bit of things about how to address the issue. There's the first issue of recognizing 
that the shame is an addiction to mm. avoid the underlying emotion mm. of fear of what is it what is it i'm afraid of yeah. so fear shame guilt are yeah. all fear based emotions mm -hmm. and judgments are addictions or oh, and self attack an addiction to avoid what you're afraid of and avoid what you're ashamed of and avoid what you feel guilty about. And so basically we're saying to Courtney, at the moment she's judging herself in an effort to suppress that layer of emotions. Mm -hmm. She needs to work through that as an addiction. And every and addiction is about pleasing somebody yeah. <laughs> to get something in return. Yeah. And even this issue that she's brought up about sexually projecting at both genders and doing it when she was little, we've given her some good information there about what might have caused that now is the um, she needs to work through that in the same way as you're suggesting. Yes, but we've also given her some uh, previous feedback by email, mm -hmm. which I feel relates to the issue. Mm -hmm. because, because what we've said to her is one of the things we've noticed in Courtney is that she, is often, she often is attracted to women, as you've pointed out, mm -hmm. who are quite nasty women, who, who, who she then feels are good women who yep. are nice women that she needs to aspire to be like. Yeah. And we're going, oh, like that person's really treating you badly, Courtney, mm. and you're not even seeing it. And not only are you not seeing it, but you are also wanting to become like them and also get their approval. Yeah, which, which the only way to get their approval is, is to, to be become more like them. them. Yeah. Or to give them the addiction that they want satisfied. Yes. And most of these women want a woman mm -hmm. to be to give them a feeling of sexual approval, yes. uh, which is what Courtney then willingly does. And to place herself below them in terms of worth. Yes. And value, yes. which she does. Yes. Yeah. And this then makes those women feel superior mm -hmm. and better, mm -hmm. and therefore it feeds their addiction. Mm -hmm. Uh, of uh, you know, which obviously comes from a low self worth at some point, or an addiction to superiority at some point yeah, yeah. that they need to address, yeah. and she just feeds that addiction. Yeah. So, so I'm saying to her that that the counsel we've already given her mm -hmm. actually it it's is related to this issue. Yeah. Right. Now I've also talked to her about the men side of things. And the men's side of things, it's quite obvious again that it's a very similar thing going on. She feels some lack of worth with men that is sexual in its nature, mm -hmm. probably related to the fact that her father feels that a lesbian woman is not such a good thing, mm -hmm. from particularly in her childhood. And therefore, she seeks the appro sexual approval of men mm -hmm. by giving them a sexual feeling so that she gets one in return of approval. Yeah. And she needs to examine how her mum and dad treated her as a child. Mm -hmm. And she needs to examine how her mother and father view homosexual people, both men and women homosexuals, right from her childhood to today. Yeah. And if she does those particular things, she'll start understanding why she's sexually projecting. Mm -hmm. And she'll also understand why it happens more in her sleep state or in a dream state than it does in her awake state. Yeah. Because she is being asked by society and her parents mm -hmm. to shut down herself sexually yeah. in order to maintain the approval of society. Mm -hmm. So this indicates that she also desires society's approval. Yeah. And, uh, and, and need society's approval before she will open up sexually. Yeah. So my suggestion is to not wait for that no. because she'll never get it on <laughs> earth probably. Yeah. Um, it, it is still, there's still many societies and most societies of the planet who have still major judgments, major judgments towards homosexuality yeah. and therefore have a lot of growing to do with regard to love yeah. when it comes to this judgment that they have uh, towards homosexual people. Mm -hmm. So, so her general shutdown sexually yep. is caused by society generally and the parents' projection mm. together mm. and her individual uh, projection of sexual feelings towards others while she's on earth and the reception of those particular feelings, the best thing to do rather than judging them is to sit down and go, okay, what did I just give that person? And what did I want to get from that person? Yes. And if I didn't give that thing to that person, what would have I've got? What, and what would I've got and what would I have felt? Yeah. And what would I have felt? Yeah. You know, 
And a lot of times she'll see that actually she would have got some level of emotional or even physical violence from that person. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why she's using sexual projection as a method of controlling it. Yeah. Yeah. And keep in mind, we're speaking now directly to Courtney yes. because some people would find different reasons why they sexually project. Of course. Yep. And it's very, very important, whether you're heterosexual or homosexual, it's very, very important to understand why you sexually project because there's a huge amount of issues with regard to the fear of violence, mm -hmm. the fear of unworthiness and mm -hmm. rejection, mm -hmm. and other issues mm -hmm. related to why we engage in this sexual bartering system that's now prevalent yep. on the planet. Yep. Mm. And it can also be that a person sexually projects because they can sense the fear in another person and they can sense the opportunity to feel powerful or feel attractive or feel more worthy over the other person and they exploit that and project sexually knowing that there is they very highly likely... They project even a sense of sexual violence towards the yes. person in order to get the response. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and it's, uh, it comes in all forms, doesn't it? Yes. And as you mentioned right back in our introduction, some women sexually project at men in order to get men's sexual response so that they can feel superior to the women in their company. So there's a lot of flavours, isn't there? Yes, to there's a lot. it's very complicated yep. and it requires a, good, uh, it requires a great deal of emotional openness. And, and it's very important to... Emotional openness cannot occur while judgment is occurring. Yeah, exactly. And emotional openness can only occur when you're willing to feel your fear, guilt and shame. Yeah. And, and shutting down the emotions of fear, guilt and shame will mean that you will not find the truth about those particular issues. So it's very, very important to open emotionally up to the emotions of fear, guilt and shame. Mm. And this is where I see most people still struggling they are refusing to feel the, the fear-based emotions. Yeah. And as a result, they're still in the heavy projection of the addictive layer, which is self-attack, self-punishment, you know, uh, judgment, self-judgment, judgment of others, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. They, they are the negative things I remember <laughs> we talked about, about that we're often projecting as addictions in order to avoid fear, the fears, which are yeah. the group of emotions that are fear-based, yeah. fear, is shame. one shame is another guilt, guilt. is another yeah. yeah and and if we continue to allow either the what we believe are the positive addictions mm. or the negative addictions yeah. uh, you know the things that we do that feel good yeah or the things that we do that feel bad yeah which are still addictions yeah in order to avoid feeling the uh, fear shame and guilt mm -hmm. and other fear-based and terror-based emotions then we will never discover the truth to what's really going on and why we do something. Yeah. So it's a very important general principle for everybody to begin working through the addictions, whether they are in one group or the other, whether yeah. whether whether they feel good or they feel bad. Yeah. They're still addictions. And I've noticed a lot of people, and to some degree I did this, I've always had a problem with self-punishment and judgment, but um, to some degree, I lived a lot in what I called positive <coughs> addictions, yeah, where so I get things, I feel partying, a bit better. Yeah, yeah. Alcohol, whatever. Travel, whatever. It, yeah, travel. Keep in mind that the motivation was addictive. Yeah. Um, and then when I realised the sin, uh, intellectually, there's a sin in that, and so I started to even to be a bit more sensitive to that, stopped all that. Yeah. But... You're still left with the I'm left negative group. Because I really, really wanted <laughs> to shut down the fear-based emotions. Of and so I felt it was more acceptable and less sinful yes. to use the self-punishment and judgment. Yes. In other words, more acceptable down. to use the, feel, the feelings... Uh, the addictions that we f that feel bad yeah. <laughs> than it is to use the addictions, addictions that, that feel, feel good, good. <laughs> and so we we tell ourselves that that's progress, but yeah, it actually is just swapping one addiction for another. And actually, in a lot of ways, you know, it's perhaps stopping being. Oh well, I can't say that either. But it's the, I had the false sense that I was stopping being as unloving to others, but I was being more unloving to myself. But actually, as I've Even worked through true. it, it's not true. No, once you realise the damage of self attack, you yes, realise that in that place damaging. you're actually harming others a lot. A lot. And also expecting a lot from others. And it also can be a way of manipulating others. Yes, because you want them to cheer you up and make you feel better. So, 
so many things where it's actually not just about yourself, yes. even if you tell yourself that in yeah. that state. Yeah. So usually when we're in the bad feeling addictions, we want other people to make us feel good. We want other people to make us feel like we're nice. <gasps> Am I progressing? Did yeah. I really feel make, this? Or whatever it exactly, was. Exactly. Yeah. Ma- want other people to make us believe we're progressing because we feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We don't, I don't feel all good in those addictions anymore. Yeah. We're not anymore in the addictions. Isn't that great? No, yeah. you're still in a yeah. whole heap of addictions. Yeah. So they're just ones that feel bad now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You need to give up both. And mm. and often I find, like for example, for yourself, it's taken you a lot longer to give up the the yeah. ones the, the addictions that feel bad yeah. than it has to give up the addictions that feel good. And that's particularly the case with people that have been brought up with shame. Right. That's particularly yeah. the case. Yeah. Because the addictions that feel bad are the go to addictions that are the heaviest suppressors. It, so, because that's the way that um to suppress shame yes it's 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 judgment it's it's a much more effective tool yeah than than a positive addiction like going out and drinking and also a lot of the so when i say positive addiction the ones that feel good the the ones that feel good often have negative connotations to them anyway so for example when yeah yeah, in society so so for example let's say you take drugs because it feels good but in society there's a there's a projection of that's pretty bad yeah so so can you see even the good ones have projections from other people that feel bad yeah so even the the only things maybe is like workaholics and um career people who use their career yeah sooner or later your wife or your husband yeah, complains about complains, that yeah. <laughs> so, so sooner or later they all feel bad but yeah. but but they feel good initially because yeah. they meet the frenzy yeah. of the addiction and and what i'm suggesting is that we often then we recognize those much more easily because you know we can see what we're doing often more easily doing things like that mm. but we often have a complete blind spot when it comes to these ones that feel bad that we're still using as addictions and yes. guilt you know uh, judgment is self-punishment self-punishment is a and judgment is just a suppression of guilt and shame and fear yeah you know so so we need to see that these are tools that we've been taught mm. to use, mm-hmm. just like the other ones. Yeah. Uh, usually, what I find is this: the so-called feel-good addictions mm. are usually self-generated. Mm-hmm. We we them. found them. Yeah. And we like using them. Yeah. The ones the the feel-bad addictions mm. are generally the ones we've been taught by in our childhood to use upon ourselves in order to get the approval of others mm-hmm. although i would say that i chose the the feel the feel some of the short-term feel good, good some of those i chose because they were accepted by my by family. family unit yeah but that's one that's what i'm saying it's like um they weren't enforced upon me but they, no, thought but they, they felt were, good to you still yes they yes. felt good to you still whereas whenever you go into self-punishment or self-judgment that doesn't terrible. feel good to you no. Even though you're encouraged to do it in yes. your family, that's right. right. They're still doing it to you, so you're definitely yes. encouraged to do it. Yeah. But um, that's the major way they're trying to shut me down. Yes, all the time. Yeah, yeah. but but the good ones are more acceptable because we feel we get at least some positive response Sh- from it. Short so the term. feel good ones, yeah. we feel there's at least some benefit to. Yeah, the feel bad ones are our go-to ones because they are usually the strongest. They are they're usually the ones that are the most deeply ingrained. Yes. And also what I find for most people, um, they are usually the ones that are most difficult to give up. Yeah, and I Because would... they receive the most negative attra- attack from families in particular. As soon as you giving stop them judging yourself, you get, you get that external judgment back. Yes. Um, yeah, I see that. Yes. And I would say definitely that's been so very, very difficult for me to work through because it was almost like with the feel-good short-term addictions, I was able to identify the compulsion much more quickly Well, the reason e- emotionally. For, the reason I mean, for that is quite clear. With the feel-good addictions, generally society at some level doesn't think they're good. Yes. So, so for example, you've got um, you know drinking or alcohol, drugs of some kind, coffee, you know, too much, chocolate, you know, sex, whatever, abusive sex or whatever, or um, you know, promiscuity, or even um, being a bully, or you get uh, fat, or you get yeah, you know yeah. eat too much and you get fat. Yeah. All of those things are looked down upon. So when you give them up, yeah, you get some society approval, mm-hmm. right? With the negative ones, that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, so ones yeah. with the ones that feel bad. 
if you give them up, you get more disapproval. Yeah. So, so for example, with the group of addictions that are all make you feel bad in the first place, which are self-attack, self-abuse, self-punishment, uh, and yeah. so forth. Self-blame. Oh, when you give of... them up, society generally around you feels that you're a bad girl now or yeah. a bad boy now because because yeah. you should think you're bad. And you're getting too big for and your you, boots yeah, and you, what are you up yourself? What's exactly. going on with so, you? Shouldn't you be ashamed of yourself? That's something you should feel guilty about. All that stuff comes at you. Correct. Yeah, and, and it's quite that's the that's why it is much harder to yeah. see and also much harder to give up the addictions that are that that feel bad mm. and we're made open to them as you said in our childhood because it comes at us externally we live with it all the time not only that most of them we uh most of our good addictions uh, if you can call them that the feel, <laughs> Short term. Uh, they should be called feel good addictions yeah <laughs> most of the feel good addictions usually occurred or established later in our life. Yeah. And the reason for that is we weren't allowed to drink until we were 16 or 18 <laughs> or 21, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, in some yeah. cases it might be 10, but yeah. it's usually not when we're four. No. Right? And we, we couldn't take drugs when we were four, yeah. generally. You know, yeah. some finish up doing so, but, mm. but only because of a terrible environment. Usually they take drugs as a choice later in their life, mm. right? They're introduced to it in their teenage years or whatever. The introduction to the feel-good addictions mm -hmm. is usually later in life. Yep. That's why they're easier to recognise and easier to give up. Yeah. But the introduction to the feel-bad addictions mm -hmm. occurred right from conception. Yeah. And so therefore they are much, much more difficult to give up. And so within that grouping you would add things like denial of self, denial of pleasure, denial of yes. personal, um, you know, fulfilment, denial, denial of, of truth. sexuality, denial of truth, all those things. They're addictions. They're addictions that really are instilled very, very young. Yes. And yes. well established in the family and well established that if you disagree with them, you will be punished. You will be severely punished, if not physically, certainly emotionally. Yeah. And but if you live in them, keep denying yourself, keep putting the family first, keep whatever it is, then you get approval almost, which is sort of a short term way to feel better about yourself. But in the end, you end up as an adult feeling worthless. Yes. Yeah. So it's very important for the listeners who are addressing any issues, including issues of sexual you mm -hmm. know, feelings that, you know, that are injury or addictive based, addiction based to understand that recognising and feeling the so-called good good feeling addictions mm. is going to be much easier process yeah. than recognising and feeling the addictions that uh, feel bad. So even even you would say like um, a daddy's little girl and stuff like that, yeah. which is kind of an addiction that you might get a feel good feeling from. Eventually, society kind of tends to look down on that, don't they? And in the end, if yeah. you're daddy's girl at forty five, there's there's Some people still are, but yeah. you know, it's sort well, of like, well, you know, there's a lot there. that are because of the emotional yeah. incestuous relationship that generally continues throughout yeah. everyone's yeah. life. But it's not generally like if you're married and, it, and yeah. your daddy's little girl, your husband's not going to be too impressed no. with it generally, <laughs> unless him and dad are pretty much in cahoots with each other. Yes. And often they're not. So, no. so, so you'll get pretty upset with you. And I suppose it's almost a negative type of addiction, isn't it? Because you are in that space being daddy's little girl, you kind of. You, well, well, There's the, the, the problem off, with the daddy's little girl negative. stuff is yeah. that that is a an addiction that was caused right from child from from you know usually from the very moment. early yeah yes. and often from the moment of birth or yeah. before so you know any addiction that is established from the moment of birth or before yeah is going to be very hard yeah to give up yeah but it, it is usually the negative addictions that have been established at an earlier time mm -hmm. not always but usually. Mm -hmm. right, have been established at an earlier time. If then there are any that are present, yeah. they'll have been established at an earlier time. Yeah. This is also why giving up substance abuse is much easier than giving up emotional addictions. Yes. Because substance addictions are usually were usually taken on later as a result of the emotional addictions. Well, that's what I was going to say. My goodness, I feel like I use substances like drinking in order to avoid the already pain that I felt about judging myself and self-punishing myself. Correct. It was like a short-term alleviation of a terrible pain I felt from another addiction. Yeah. Um, so, but I can see why if people never deal with those feel bad addictions, they're driven back to to other 
short-term feel-good addictions mm-hmm. because there's a terrible pain there where they're treating themselves very badly, aren't they? And they're... Well, again, I just feel say, it's an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> it's an addiction okay. to do it and you've got to find yep. the reason. It's like the any reason addiction. Why doing it. Yeah. If you're really sincere about addressing any addiction, and you have to be sincere about addressing any addiction if you're ever going to feel any causal emotion. Yeah. You are not going to feel any causal emotion unless you do. Yes. So, so and you, know, you I must miss, do it. I definitely misspoke because I said it's a terrible pain. But when I really feel about working through those issues, it's a it's relief. Been, it's a belief. And when, as I work through it, it is relieving. But I do face fear. There's a terrible fear I face exactly. of the terrible the punishment that I think is going to reason why the addiction exists. Yeah, to yeah. prevent the feeling of yeah. the of something you're afraid of. Yeah, something. So even the self judgment, giving that up, just the fear of the parental punishment that happens, and that's can be pretty that simple. That can be pretty big fear, actually. Yeah, yeah. and it can be that simple too, yeah. though. Yeah. And this is where I see a lot of people complicating their lives severely is they, they give up the good feeling addictions because mm-hmm. they recognise them relatively easily. Not all of them. You know, no. the ones that have been established from birth yeah. onwards, yeah. they don't give those up generally. No. They give up the ones that they can see. Yes. You know, the ones that are easy to see because they, were, they came to you later in life. Yeah. And, and they were choices generally that you made. Mm-hmm. So, so the addictions that you made choices to establish generally are easier to give up mm. but the addictions that other people established inside of you which yeah. are all you know earlier than birth or onwards those addictions are much much more difficult to give up and when you say that other people establish them really you're saying that the environment enforced say an emotion externally which we then used our will to internal would you say it where does our because well, the, the child end, doesn't we have are, a developed will no so the child automatically absorbs the negative emotion from its environment yeah and this is the damage we do to our children yep. that we must stop doing yeah we've got to stop damaging our children by these damaging emotions that come out of us because we've chosen to not heal them. Mm-hmm. And, and those emotions enter the child. The child doesn't have a developed will to stop it yeah. from entering it. Yeah. And so it automatically enters the child. And usually that occurs even during the gestation period after mm-hmm. conception. Mm-hmm. And by the time we're certainly born, we're used to accepting certain emotions from people, even though we're usually born crying and we cry for the first year yeah. of our life a lot yeah. because we, we can't, we, if they feel terrible, yeah. but, but the reality is we're absorbing a lot of these emotions still, absorbing the belief systems, absorbing all of these different things into our soul. Yeah. And that's why they're so difficult to give up because all of that absorption occurred before we intellectually chose anything. Yeah. But we have, it's almost become ingrained in our understanding of will because we've been doing it so automatic. Like what I'm trying to get to, I suppose, is the question like now we're adults, me with my self punishment or judgment, that I was actively using my will to continue a pattern that, that my environment enforced on me when I was little. And so I had to engage with my will. To get rid of self punishment. To get rid of self punishment, didn't I? Well, when you say I did. didn't I, you I haven't. Did. You I haven't, did. You haven't yet, though. No, but I have. So it is a process. Right. It is a process. Through, right? yep. so, so, yes, but, but the reality is it's going to be harder to give that up than it is to give up drinking. Because of this thing you're saying. And yes. yes because giving up the thing yep. that came from childhood is much, much more difficult yep. than giving up the thing that you chose because it made you feel good. Yeah. Temporarily, yeah. I know, but it yeah. still made you feel good. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be, uh, so you give that up then you're going to have exposed to you the emotional reasons why, why you chose those particular addictions and that's going to be the more difficult phase. Yes. Because the yes. emotional addictions are much, much more difficult to give up than the substance addictions. They are. And as you say, I do feel I've made some progress in that area, but I'm not completely free of it, even mm. after really giving up a lot of those feel-good addictions seven years ago. Yes. Not all of them, but a yep. lot of them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'd like to probably point out here too, because it fits in, is that even if we're still eating meat, we're in an addiction. Yeah. And, and there has to be, we're abusing substances in this case, and it's yeah. causing the death of animals as well. So it's actually quite a severe yeah. problem from a soul-based, love-based perspective. Yeah. And there's a reason why we're doing it emotionally. Yeah. And, and so usually there's quite a lot of quite strong reasons why we're doing it emotionally. Yeah. Health 
based so-called health-based reasons False and approval-based yeah. reasons, particularly from our parents yeah. and our society that we're doing it emotionally. Yeah. And if we're still in meat, we haven't even started addressing the emotional reasons why we're doing it. Yeah. So, so we're still in the addiction. Yeah. So, so that's another example. In this case that Courtney's raising, the, what she's talking about are the sexual projections mm -hmm. that are going on between ourselves and others. And this is a very, very big area, mm -hmm. as we've discussed, mm -hmm. because um, it is a part of, you know, our, our so-called good feelings, <laughs> yeah. right? And so we use them quite heavily. But the problem with them is they come from very, very young in our life. Yes. And there's a huge amount of fear judgment and so forth attached to them mm. which causes most people to not address them all of their life yeah and so I, I would recommend that people just follow some of those examples we've given yep and follow some of the advice about giving up the feel good addictions <laughs> and the feel, <laughs> and the bad, feel bad addictions <laughs> and and working their way through allowing the fear allowing the sexual shame mm. and allowing the sexual guilt mm -hmm. and allowing their sexual fears. Mm. Sexual fears are often for women are often related to getting hurt. Yeah. Sexual fears for men are often relating to women not wanting them or not liking them or feeling yeah. rejected. Yeah. Sexual guilt or shame, sexual shame is often related to in women feeling like, you know, um, that they're just ashamed because they should be ashamed because they're a woman having and a sexual feeling. If they have a sexual feeling, oh, well, well they're a slut. Then, yep. yeah, <laughs> then they're a slut. So, yep. you know, there's sexual yep. shame based issues there. And and for men, sexual shame based issues are usually resulting around two issues. One is they've often treated women women badly yeah, or they're engaging in sexual activity themselves that are triggering the feelings uh, mm -hmm. the conscience-based feelings of guilt that need to be addressed. Yes, like we, we do hear from men at times about pornography and they're feeling very shamed about that, aren't yes. they? Yes, yeah. yeah. So you feel the shame, mm -hmm. you feel any sexual thing. So we, we talk about sexual fear, sexual shame, sexual guilt. Yeah. We feel those emotions, but we ask ourselves the question. Mm -hmm. The question is... What is this guilt about? What am I ashamed about? What am I afraid of? being the truth or whatever am I afraid of yeah correct and and we're not even going to get there unless we're willing to work our way through our sexual addictions mm -hmm. and the reasons why we use sex yeah as a bartering tool to get something in return and what it is we're trying to get in return yeah such a big issue but thank you so much for talking about this because I just feel there is so much information that will help not just Courtney, but so many people. Mm. And there's a lot more we could say, of course, and be a bit more detailed. Yeah. And I'm sure when we talk about in the FAQ se sessions, when we talk about s human sexuality, yeah. we will address some of these issues. And so people will find different FAQs in the emotion section, the sexual yeah. areas section, and also in just general religious discussion and so forth, and discussion yeah. about homosexuality and heterosexuality, yeah. because it, there are huge amounts of judgments about sexuality on the planet, mm -hmm. and there has been for such a long time Yes, that, that it is well ingrained in most people from an emotional injury perspective. Yes, mm. yeah. And... Um, I know that Courtney's just going to love that you mentioned about uh, veganism because she's a <laughs> she's really emotionally a vegan, and I'm sure yes, that yes, that'll, yeah. Uh, well, I think she'll be pleased that so, that came so up she, in this conversation. So she's found it relatively easy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to address all of her mum and dad's and society's yes. projections in the USA yes. towards a person who's become a vegan. Yeah. For for some reason, she's found that easy. Yeah. But when it comes to the sexual side of things, she's finding that much more difficult yeah. to address. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we love you, Courtney. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to be able to. It's a good question to answer because I feel a lot of people have. Uh, there's there's so many sexual issues on the planet, and there is so much shame, guilt, and fear about sexuality on the planet. You've just got to start talking about it. Most people blush. And, yes. and, and, you know, should anybody make a mistake sexually, you know, it's the end of the world for yeah. most people and literally the end of their career or the end of their life mm -hmm. for, for a lot of people. Mm 
mm-hmm. and the end of their marriage generally and the end yeah. of a lot of things yeah. um, that don't necessarily have to occur if they understood what was really going on and they stopped acting upon their sexual addictions mm-hmm. and started instead to allow themselves to feel their sexual fears, sexual shame, sexual guilt and mm-hmm. other reasons why they use sexuality as a bargaining tool to feel good about themselves. Yeah, I just thought of something um, that I saw on the on the Divine Truth Forum. Courtney had had an interaction where she recommended a movie, which uh, is one of her favourite movies, I think. And it's I haven't seen the movie, but what I gathered from the thread was that it's about a lesbian couple or a lesbian relationship. And what she attracted was a couple of women telling her that they'd watched the movie, but they just felt that it was so unloving to the actors because there was a long sex scene involving two women in it and I just it was just occurring to me that that um, is part of Courtney's attraction because obviously um, very few that's a whole other issue about whether or not it's loving to have sex scenes in movies Mm. but um, obviously a lot of heterosexual sex um, you know people don't say I'm so sorry for those actors that they had to do that long heterosexual so there is an issue there obviously for those people yeah and there's part of the judgment yeah, that's it's part um, of the judgment towards a, towards a lesbian couple's sexuality. Yeah, and yeah. you see this a lot, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a it's a big problem, and yeah. and and while so much intense judgment exists, mm. it is hard to work through it, you know, because because obviously people have got to feel the judgment and also potentially be attacked even more working yes. way through the issue. Yeah, but you get through the issue. And you've got a very potential, potentially very happy life to to live, notwithstanding other people's projections. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. It's wonderful. Yeah.